You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What's up, punters and dribblers? Welcome to the Thursday show. Hello Sport Podcast, I'm on Qualified Opinion and Wavering Bias. Here in our bounced out motherfucking trackies, which are mere moments away from going back on sale. We're dressed in our fineries, Tom. Yeah. We're dressed in our fineries, punters and dribblers. The bounced out trackies, perfect for any occasion, obviously and particularly made for those bounced out Sundays, those bounced out Mondays, those bounced out Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, Wednesdays. Even. Fridays? I tell you what, you want to sip into these on a fucking Friday morning after you give yourself one hell of a thrashing Thursday night when you get carried away, when you go, shit, yeah, the weekend's here, but it's not technically. Then you wake up. Pounding headache. It's 9.30, 10 a.m. You've missed your 9 o'clock meeting. Doesn't matter. You slip into your fineries. Yep. You slip into your fineries, punters and dribblers. You get on the blower and you go, Colonel, what do you got for me? Because you know I need your fucking love and tenderness. Mm. And tender chicken. Yep. I also think that it's worth noting, listen, Eddie, we're in, a, uh, we're in an economic downturn. It's a recession. And people are, you know. Not a recession. Not a recession, you know what just, I mean. Just economic a, downturn. Not, the, not, a, not multiple quarters of, uh, of whatever the fuck it is, negative economic growth. Tom, I think, I think you could say that it's a, it's a soft economic outlook. There's some economic headwinds. Carry on. And so, you know, the price of milk's up. Price of a loaf is up. And price of everything's up. Price of everything's up. And so, Petrol, you know, back up fucking yeah. paid two twenty the other day. It's tough out there, which is why we've timed the release of the bounce out track is perfectly with your tax return. Now, some of you might be out, or some people out there might be like, hey, put that towards, you know, uh, paying off the credit card. Put that towards paying off student debt. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. How are you going to be comfortable? You need to be smarter than that. Yeah, you, you need, need to, to fit be- your own mask before you can fix your other problems. 100%. Also... If you're like, I'd like to split this fucking payment up, Afterpay that bitch. We've now officially got Afterpay. Big fan of it. Yep. Split four payments, one payment into four. Pfft. Bob's drunk. Dude, growing up, it was lay by a city. And I like, I lay by a jacket once. And obviously it was, you didn't get it until you paid it off. Oh, did you get it? No, no you, you got it when you, you got it. it. You got it, got it when got you paid it, it. No, you no, no, no. No, you, you got it when you paid it off. You had you to know? pay it off first. Yeah. You'd sat, there was yeah. a lay by section. I remember right. like the one at Target. Yeah. I would always have shit in there. Southern jeans. And you'd go there and you'd go to the lay by section and you'd pay your little pennies. You'd get your checkbook out most likely back in the day mm. and you'd chip away at that fucker. Yeah. And then when, you know, seven, eight months later, You'd paid off your bloody laundry basket. You could go down there and you could pick it up. Yep. They were the days. They were. It's easier now. Now Way easier. Now it's time to pay. Piece of piss. And we do have it at hellosport.shop. The trackies will be on sale when, you might ask. When? Tuesday, the 16th of July at 6 p.m. hellosport.shop. Tuesday, the 16th of July. Hellosport.shop. Hellosport.shop. They are in country. They are in our fulfillment center, the warehouse. So once purchased, they will be going out the next day. Just blow your tax return, and you know what? It won't even. It won't it's even. Touch, even it won't it. even touch the sides well, of your tax return. Well, if you've been claiming appropriately, punters and dribblers, yeah. it won't make a dent. It won't make a dent. But what it will do is keep you warm, cozy, and comfy. And you know what we should be doing, and it's more just because we're lazy. But we really should have fitted out everyone in the studio with them. You know what I'm going to do what? after this? What are you I'm going to get some sent up for the boys. I think that'd be because again, nice they're already in the country. Well, they're already here. They're already in country, mm. so they've cleared customs. Consider yourselves fitted out, gentlemen. Can't wait. That was just it, listen. If you're not fucking pumped up for the return of the bounce track tracky, I'm not here. How many years have it been? Four years, three years, 2019, I reckon. Pre pre COVID, maybe 2020. Nah, 2020. 2020. I reckon it was in COVID. Four years. And unlike last time we got bounced out trackies, was a pre-sale and they arrived in November. They arrived late spring. Sure, they did. They were the warmer months. They're already here. Mate, people still wear them. Jarch was wearing his yesterday. And they looked fucking unbelievable. Yeah, but you, you know he'd look better in a brown pair. Oh, of course he would. Of course he would. Buffalo's anyway, uh, bounce out trackies next Tuesday. I will say this. Obviously, we're going to give like we, you know, to everyone in the, the family, in the team, Sebo wearing some new golf merch coming out very soon. Literally stains on it. He put it on this morning. He he's was a, doing a video in it, and there was food all over the front well, of it. He's a, he's a messy boy. 
But yeah, he is. He's always messy. He always spills food. He's a he's a dribbler. The man's ability to spill food on himself. I don't think oh, there's not a, he's a white. Dribbler. There's not a white t-shirt in the land that has come within fucking what maybe twenty meters of Sebo that he hasn't stained. He almost needs to hire me full time. It doesn't work, buddy. He needs to hire me full time just to be fucking removing stains. That's a full time job. Or he job. needs a bib, dude. We need to get him a smock, like a kid's art smock. Well, you remember we we're going to get bibs made for dribblers? Early doors. That was the first bit well, of Well, who's we the preeminent get... dribbler? Yeah, we need to get Sebo. Sebo a big bib. That's true. He's king of the dribblers. We need to get Sebo his own bib anytime. 100%. He's, <laughs> he's the biggest dribbler on the planet. Yeah. It's not even close. No. And he covers himself in food. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sebo Shout out to Sebo Who Love was in the office Sebo. And heard all that Yeah he's just over there which Yeah is, we, we'd yeah. never say that Behind his back We would But we'd also say it to his face Which is what which makes is us what we're doing But like that's what makes I think us Be like stand up people Is that we're about that life We'll say it to your face We're about elite honesty Yeah We'll say it to your fucking face Yeah bruh We'll fucking say Fucking face I uh, want to take a quick moment Edward Now that we have just subtly weaved in some merch advertising. Oh, that was subtle. Uh, that was a, that was as subtle as you like. I don't know say. if anyone picked up on it. We are selling trackies. I want to shout out a friend of ours, the great and powerful Nedley Brockman. Oh, Ned Brockman. Oh. Last night we got to go to the premiere of his documentary called Run Double N. Can I ask you something? Yep. Did you get turned on by the double, double, double letters? Mm -hmm. I said to I Elle, did. I go, that's fucking elite brand. Yeah. And she goes, what do you mean? I go, you're a creative gal. Yep. And if you aren't picking up the double, the double, D double D, D double to double N, N to double, double N, N, then I'm not here, sister. Run spelt R-U-N-N. -N. <laughs> so Ned spelt Ned, N -U -D -D. double D, Brockman, double N, run, double N. And with that fucking, some sick photos of him, on that journey. Anyway. It's iconic, that photo. It is. The documentary is obviously about his run from uh, WA to Bondi, but then it's also a bit about, it's like, it's not just Perth. that. Sorry, what? WA. Perth. Sure. Sorry, mate. Uh, Cottesloe Beach, to be specific, everyone. Good. Um, Do your job. <laughs> so, like that, but it was also a bit about his life. And like how he became a sick psychotic fuck who likes to run everywhere. Tell you what, mum's got a bit about her. I love, I dude, I'm a mum's got a bit about her. I love Mama Brockman. I love Papa Brockman. I tell you who was hot, brother Brockman. He was like a an old fucking bushy bra, but like young old bushy. I tell you what, I thought when I saw him, I go that he'd have big hands. Of course he would. And they'd calloused, be huge, hard, hands, and hard. tough as fuck. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, good luck blistering <laughs> those cunts. Like a man's man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But like no jaw has ever uh, sorry, no jar, no jar has oh, ever bested him. Hey, you're a lid on a jar. Good luck. Good luck to you, bro. If you need Brockman's brother, name escapes. Or me. Ian. Papa Brockman. Yeah, but he didn't no, he he's not been bested by a jar either. Ian. Oh fuck no. I mean, listen, Ian Brockman Ian Cropman. Ian Cropman Brockman passed on his ability to, to best jars to his son, Big Brother Brockman. Logan? Logan, Logan Brockman, Thank LB. You. And I mean, I'm sure that Ned could fucking open a jar. But but he doesn't, on the face of him. No, on the face to of him. To eyeball the man no. does not suggest he's got a leak jar, jar opening in him. No, it, you're right. Mama Brockman would best a jar. I don't, Fuck yeah, yeah, there's no jar The whole family, let's be honest. And the sister, again, uh, sorry, name escaped me. Mabel? Mabel. The whole fucking Brockman clan, no jar is safe in that fucking household. Good on us, Forbes stock. Mate, I've got it on good authority that when jars get fucking brought home from the shops, the lids just fall off. They just fall off. They just they just concede. Yeah. They concede as soon as they enter the premises. Yeah, it's smart, dude. They sapuku themselves. The documentary, punters and dribblers, is next Tuesday, same time our trackies are selling, funnily enough. Uh, it's going to be available on KO Freebies. Yes. The whole thing. You'll be able to watch it. Um, it's It was just – it was a really uh, cool – sort of coverage of the run uh, and then also as I said insight into him being a psychotic young kid I since having children of my own punters and dribblers yeah I'm a dad I was almost crying from the first maybe 10, 10 seconds I teared up I teared up I teared up I'm with that I'm with that child and I teared up it's emotional it is it's emotional but it's emotional from like a just it's uh, from like a just someone really having a – just the sincerity of the man and the sincerity of the family, parental support of child, loving parents, loving son. 
It was just. Oh, I don't want to give too much away. You got to. Watch I know. Yourself. That's why I'm, I'm dancing. I'm, I don't I'm give holding. Too much I'm away. holding back. But there are some very emotive scenes around homelessness as well, which really got the fucking. Oh, bra. And those ones again. The the one particularly where it's like before. Yeah, the one I'm talking before about. Ned was Ned. Yeah. You're like, oh, this guy has been giving a fuck about this on a really sincere level yeah. for a long time. Guy's got a like a heart of gold. He does have a heart of gold. Uh, and he's just and a it's just, And it was a beautiful You know what it was for me Not that we've Not that we condone these beliefs But these beliefs are out there Whether you like it or not Where it's like He's only doing this shit for notoriety I'm like You don't know what you're talking You have no about. idea what you're talking you about You don't know what you're talking There's about There's no more sincere Genuine human being You, you don't You don't know what you're talking about And if you'd like to be To be a little bit more informed Go watch Ryan. Go watch that. But also, like, the people who are, like, uh, like Strava Kings, who are like, Oi, I'm, fucking that's who I'm, ta- I'm, I'm talking. Yeah. They're, they're in there. No, of course they're, they're in the fucking. That's, they are the. They are that. They, they were they exactly are that. who I was referring yeah. to. Or fucking Ned Brockman says he was running fucking four something splits, but if you look at his Strava, it's like, yeah, cunt, you can look at his Strava and see. What the fuck is going on? We anyway, shouldn't, he shouldn't be pausing it. We're going off topic here. We are. Great document. <laughs> we're I'll punch on for anyone who fucking. Has a bad word to say about Ned Brockman. Again, 25 years old, an inspiring gentleman. Sickening. A sickening, sickening age. A wise, a wise soul, dude. Oh, he's, he's an old soul, dude. Like, you want to go down the woo-woo path, you know? like Reincarnation. Like our, our, our wives love this shit. Yep. There's old spirits, new spirits, old souls, new souls. He's an old soul. Oh, he's, he's an old soul. Old as Methuselah, that soul. That soul's had a couple of, like, run-throughs. Yeah. You and know, he knows. Like, it's come back that a couple of times. Knows. More than a couple of times. I'd say a couple of handfuls. Seen some shit. Fuck yeah. Uh, and has decided to come back this time as Ned. Again, if you subscribe to the woo-woo, because the kids just seem winners, you can tell. Yeah. I I was reminded, though, during the documentary, Tom, and again when I ran six and a half Ks this morning. And me ate yesterday, just to As to you. just how fucked up it was, what he did. Yeah. Six and a half today, punters and dribblers. I've, you know, I've... Uh, I've, I've run not, a marathon. I've, I have, Tom, thank you. I am an M.M., I've not been running as much of late after my uh, critically acclaimed half marrow, one hour 46, whatever. Um, I don't want to blame Jeff Athletic, but when he went off on uh, paternity leave, yeah. congratulations to him, it really threw me out. Well, it's a little bit selfish. It is, but it's it's like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's, a little bit selfish. It threw me out a little bit. I was in a routine, and then I stopped being in a routine, and then chocolate comes into the house, and I don't know what to do. And I blame him. It's, it's a little bit like, listen, are you going to be my personal trainer or not? Where, put your priori- where are your priorities at? You know? Like, yeah, you've got a kid, but you don't have a... Like, you've sure, you got a with, beautiful you don't young need, daughter You don't need wife. to be with her all the time. Yeah, hey, you can't carve off fucking a few well, hours you can't, a week. You can't carve off an hour for your old mate. Maybe two hours. And now he's going to fucking the Gold Coast. Is leaving he? Us, yeah, she's sending us back to the Wolves. We're not on tomorrow. Fuck! It's DIY day tomorrow. Fucking hopeless. Anyway, shout out to Jeff. Jeff Athletic. Punish but six and a half of the best this morning, Tom. Six, you know, five thirties, whatever. Just, just doing it easy. But not, but, but also not doing it that easy. I did, I did it. Not I wasn't, easy at all. I wasn't a doing that that easy. And I was just thinking to myself, how the fuck did he get out of Perth? What twelve hundred meters elevation out of that cunt? The, the thing that I that was that again, we were following it so closely that everyone was and was so in, we were so invested in it every single day. This is before we even knew the cunt, and. Then you sort of like time passes and you forget. Like I was sort of taken back to the excitement of that time and just how his life changed over the course of that run. He left a relative unknown and just was like running towards this new life. And as like the hype built as he got closer to Bondi, more and more people knew him and were aware of who he was. But like how he had that fucking heinous injury. And he had to drive, what, was it 14 hours to get looked at? Yeah, got an MRI to see if there was no. Uh, and then again, something. I don't, I don't want to give away. Like, I mean, everyone knows the story, knows the story, the story's out there. But like, I don't want to get. But just that injury, and then what he did after it. I'm just like, I just sickening. I ran eight kilometers yesterday, I, Edward. I ran eight kilometers. I couldn't even knock out ten, and I was fucking dead. Mm-hmm. You talk about five thirties. Have a look at Mister Seven Minute Fifteen. Tell you what, I what else I liked about the documentary, Mister Seven Fifteens. I was not hoping you'd pick that up, but yeah, sure, call me some of Is how fucking cowboy the whole thing was. I, I knew thought it was it cowboy. Would, but I thought it would have been planned a little bit more than that. Yeah, 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 you're fair. It was cowboy as fuck. 
It was Cowboys. His mum was like, which way are we running? Yeah. You didn't know there was <laughs> elevation? Um, what have you got up here? Is this his last run? This is his 100 miles last Friday. Yeah, 161 Ks he ran. 518 splits. 518. 14 hours 12. It's crazy. This makes me sick. Yeah. Sick to my rugby league. Summer. And then the next day he ran a marathon. Correct. His, his, uh, obviously he's got his in under next, f- in under four hours. His next big challenge coming up. And then he ran this morning. Him and Clancy were like, "Yeah, hey, you're gonna get him run this morning." That was when I left the conversation. I'm like, I have nothing more to contribute here, guys. Obviously, I'd love to come run with you, but I assume I'm not. It was it, lo- Lucky Clancy, obviously friend of the show, friend of Tobler's in particular, got him over the oh, line. Basically, Tobler's got him over the line guy. in 40 degree heat. Shout out to Lucky, one of the greats. He got a nice mention yesterday. There might have even been an at an Instagram handle, but. The moment of the whole documentary. The moment of moments yep. in, during the whole. I mean, this this was received with rapturous applause. Yeah, it was. This was this was like they've basically finished on this moment. They essentially finished on this moment. Is uh, your hero Edward Simpson? He, there was a little VO in there. That's yeah. voiceover for the fucking. No um, way. Little care for the podcast. Obviously, there were no. We we look. We waived all financial remuneration for the use of that. But audio. could come looking. We could come looking. We won't come looking unless things start to get a little bit tough at Shane Keith. Then we may <laughs> come looking. But just a little bit at the end where it was like, oh, and then he's done that run and like, what's coming up? And it's a little Edward Simpson. So what's the next big thing? Something like that. Something like that. And me and Eddie are down there. It's like we're across the aisle from each other. So it's like I'm on the aisle. Then Ella's on the seat, the next, the seat across the aisle. Then Eddie's on the other side. And Steph obviously inside me. And Steph didn't know it was Eddie. Ella didn't know it was Eddie. And then I'm just looking at me and Eddie like, that's why you Huge. need. That's why you need someone there to fucking just to be just to get around you in the big moments. Because my wife was, I go, I go, you like that? She goes, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I was like, and oh, you I don't know the fucking sound of my voice, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> fuck <laughs> you. Yeah. That was, and he actually said that loud. That went across the whole cinema. We don't whisper for any like. That was no, disrespect. I don't, whisper, I don't whisper for anyone. No, that was disrespect. It was. And Steph didn't recognize Listen, it either. My, I go, it, was my, I go, it, was, it was my big moment. Even yeah. Ned said at the end, of you like that voiceover? I liked it. Mm. Don't, my wife did. No, oh, she didn't notice it. Steph didn't notice it. It was basically just you and me. Mm. We liked it. Yeah, we loved it. Anyway, shout out to Ned. Um, I, look, I mean, I obviously don't I, – I wasn't included in that. That hurt a little bit. But, I mean, just to know that – I guess maybe the show that it was set on. This is me trying to make myself feel better, but like I didn't, I obviously didn't say anything worse. How about this? How about this? How about this? You were sitting next to me when I said that. That's. I'll cool. take it. That's pretty. cool. I'll take it. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. And Tobler would have been paneling. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that that's is pretty sick. cool. We were all in the room, except Toads. Except Toads, you weren't here yet. And we were me. And Will wasn't here yet. So it was just us three. And that's Seb probably cool. wasn't here. Seb was probably somewhere <laughs> spilling food in himself. Yeah, but the rest of us, we were. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, on running, go check that out though. Go check out the Brockman Doco uh, next Tuesday on KO. And it's again in front of the paywall if you're some freak who doesn't have KO yet. If you're a freak, just put your email address in um, and then you can unsubscribe if you're like that worried about it. Yep. He's also Uh, got a new book coming out in (laughs) September. Does he? book, does he? Called Fire Up. Fucking hell. Well, I wonder what that's about. Big Bookman. Ned Bookman. Ned Bookman. He wanted, to, he wanted to call it a brockumentary. Not 100% sure. In September. A yeah, he got up there and he goes, I should have called it a brockumentary. I was like, yeah, dude. I'm like, that's hilarious. Wait, so September before his run? Yeah, before what? the big run in October. Is that two books in a year, Ned? Like, what are you fucking... Mm, yeah. Yeah. Who are you, he Jordan like, Peterson? Did he run last oh. year or year before? The year before he ran. He 2022. Run. Yeah, but the book last year. True. Well, he's like you know, prolific dude. He's a prolific. Was he a, he's a, one of Australia's most prolific n- novelists. Mm. Except it's not a novel. It's not a novel. Bookman. <laughs> yeah, it's a bookman. Yeah, he's an, he's like, a bookman. He's Australia's most prolific bookman. Anyway, moving on. We, as you know, punters and dribblers, are proud ambassadors for the Sydney Marathon. You know what we didn't do, which I I, I regret greatly. We never shared with the people the fact that we were the front cover of the Sydney Marathon magazine. I thought we're putting that up as a post. Don't think did it that went not up. go up? I don't think it went up. No, I need to start getting that nine tails out again. Mm. Yeah, because fucking things are slipping. Yeah, we need the start, cracks. Yeah, we need to start whipping people. We need to start whipping again. You might call it old school. You might call it arca- uh, uh, archaic. archaic. Yep. I'd call it uh, results driven. Yep, that's it. Uh, now, listen, if you're watching the YouTube though, here it is. Us looking cool on the front cover of the magazine. Bang! There it is. Sick. Anyway, uh, Sunday, September fifteenth. We go to war again as a people. Mm. The good day goes run club, 450 strong. Yeah, 450. 
Also worth pointing out that we were hamstrung by the yep. fact it sold out. I have it on good authority that a 1,000 would have been achieved. So let's yeah, call yeah, it a 1,000 yeah. strong. We had 600 last year when we had free reign to swell that fucking run to, to that team as big as possible. This year, with basically 15 minutes notice, we had 300 people in like an hour. We did 350 in one day. Yep. So there you go. Listen, you, you might be saying to yourself, it's not about you. No, today, it is about it us. Is, it is about us. Now... On to my point I'm trying to make. Get to it. If you'll allow me, punters and dribblers. If you'll allow me. This year, friend of the show, fourth born, maybe fifth born son, Cody Bryan. Cody Totes. Cody Totes, the tote bag. Mr. Totes himself will be going head to head with Tobler's time of four hours and 50 with change. 52 ish. If he doesn't achieve the feat, he'll be in the largest pants ever seen by man, and he'll be in them for 30 days continuously unless he's in the shower. Otherwise, they must be on. If pants he, visible if he from wins, space. he will be getting an undisclosed amount of cash. Mm. How's the training going, buddy? It's going all right. It's going all right. Um, I'm not well, like I a, heard some pretty impressive yeah, numbers you punch, you, you, throw, you came in here swinging that dick of yours about like some pretty hot splits and some hot disto. Yeah, I did it. I did some. I did thirteen honest and true this morning. That's pretty good. That's very good. Yeah. At what? Five thirties. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's, uh, that's good. good. That's healthy. That's good. It, Tobler's fucked. Oh, obviously you need to. Do you want to do some strength training with with Jeff? Maybe make sure that your body doesn't break down. We don't want your back going. I'm st- I'm doing stuff at the gym as well. To yeah, but is anyone up. telling you what to do, or are you just going in there and like doing? Why well, do you get a program off him? Off Jeff? Yeah. I'll take a program off Jeff. Fuck yeah. no. You don't have to go and see him. You can just get a program. You just get Sweat. a program and he can tell you. So then you can go to your gym. What gym you go to? Uh, I go to a uh, gym in Newtown. One you, playground. You don't want to name it? I don't know. One playground. I don't necessarily want to promote them. It's not my favourite gym. Oh, you, you don't go. love it? No, we, listen. He, I respect that. He doesn't want to promote other gyms that aren't Jeff Athletic. And that's fair. That. No, that's, that's fair. fine. We'll talk to Jeff and we'll get you a program. And maybe you talk to him about your back issues so that he can tell it to your needs. Yeah. Are you doing any uh, so thirteen k, oh, yeah. mate. What what's the furthest you ever run? Fifteen, sixteen. Fuck, hun. He's going real well. Yeah. The yeah. I'm like I'm not like a hardcore runner or anything. I'm just kind of like, and I'm kind of loosely following the plan. I'm just trying to do like one long one, and because I'm still playing football at the moment, it's a bit hard because I can't run on the weekend. Because we're we giving him a program yet. He's got the host we have. Yeah, the, I got the. Program. Oh, you got the program. He's got the good day goals run yeah. club program. But I like can't run on the weekend, so I have to try and do a long run during the week. How Why many, can't you how run many on weeks Sunday? Have we got? Because I'm too sore from football. We sure. are in our yeah. tenth week out. Wait, wait, what sort of distances should you be doing as per the calendar? Ah, uh, twelve to fourteen this week. Okay, okay. So you sixteen don't right twenty in actually, bro. Oh, my week behind on the long run. I think. Are you doing your hills tomorrow? Uh, yeah, eighth by forty-five second hill all sprints. All right, all right. I just said I'm following it loosely. <laughs> 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 You're not following it at all, are you? No, I am, like, loosely. Loosely. I'll be honest with you. I Cody never ran Totes, hills ever. I'll show you how many fucking hill sessions I did. Yeah. yeah. Zero so hill sessions. Worry. Did you do any? Yeah, heaps. Did you? Yeah, I did, like, all the ones in the training. Because I live on a big hill as well. But that I fucking respect brutal. It. No, I respect it. Mate, he lost not a fuckload of weight. It looked great. I'm not knocking him for it. I just never did a hill run in my entire prep. I obviously didn't do much prep, but, like... I would say this as well. If you if you get a nice day and you don't beat the time, you fucking fail that miserably. Because it was so hot last year. It yeah. was, like, it's unbearable. Impre- it's really degrees. impressive. In September. On track, it would have been 45 degrees. It was fucked up. Minimum yeah. it was. What splits did you run at four hours 50? Roughly. Like, seven? I seven can't hour? remember. I did the first half in six-minute splits and then fell off a cliff. I think it's around like 657s by okay. the end of it. Yeah, right. Because it was like, yeah, 50 But again, degrees. mate, it's not... Did you not cramp at all in that run? <laughs> nah. I just I had don't know how everyone did cramp. Because he was getting him fucking... And I had the, my Sherpa. He had the Sherpa. Yeah, he, he had the Sherpa. I ended up having a Sherpa as well, but it was the Sherpa I had post-cramping. I just... That cramping is I, fucked. I never got the cramping Can't, at all. The cramping the was or... the most insane thing I've ever felt in my life. But you had no... You had nothing in the tank. <laughs> You just went in cold. I raw dogged a little, but I like you again. Punters, dribblers. If you're new here, Tom was going to do the half marathon at the start of the. Had race. to talk him into doing the full. It was at different times the half. It would have been a waste. I was of just time. like, well, no, I was going to run twenty and just pull out. But you were going to do the half as the because I thought I thought it all started at the same time. Then it was like, no, they started differently. I'm like, well, I'll just run twenty and pull out. Yeah. Anyway, cramping was fucked. You need to have that shit sorted. My entire body, I was like, I was stiff as a board, and Josh was there. Fucking fold me like origami. 
I was talking to Josh the other day. He's like, is anyone, no one else is running it because I, I feel like he didn't want to run it again. Yeah, he doesn't want to have to help. I go, no, Cody's running it. He's like, uh. You don't need to be involved. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to be involved, mate. Although it does asterisk the, com- the competition. Like, or is Clancy will probably run it. Just get him to Sherpa him. Or maybe Clancy just wants to run his own race. But Clancy, might, Clancy might want to scratch the itch, That's which what is I mean. the sub three, yeah. which he hasn't done. Sort of out you, bro. But you haven't. You haven't done it, Clancy. But what you have done is get your arms looking real good, though. He's in great, Nick. I just did you touch him last night? Look, I, t- I had I my seen arms him around him. I, I saw him. just the 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 door, like I don't know how to properly explain the resting arm vein. You know what I mean? Where it's like I'm not actually even on, I don't even have a pump on right now, and my bicep vein is just through the roof. It was absolutely fucking insane, sickening, insane. Sickening. Resting arm vein, dude. If you can get that, you're doing very well. Very, very well. Uh, we'll right, keep toes. a close eye on your totes. When's your next long run? So you do one a week? One a week. What are you going to go for next week? Uh, 16 to 20. Go to 20, dude. Push yeah. it. You can do 13 on your I was sweet. Push I, it to I the was limit. sweet at the end of this morning. <laughs> Where'd you run? What was your track? So I started in Urco, then I ran up to Redfern, and then all the way along Botany Road, and then back lap sydney park a couple times and then up king street would you run the marathon with the tote bag slung over your shoulder <laughs> if there's an additional uh, monetary fee added onto my prize do well, sure. carry all your gels in bags. it huh? carry all your gels in it your nipple tape your vaso nipple tape. this cunt needs that i didn't have any nipple tape no neither but i don't have glass diamond 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 diamond, 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 cutters. Oh, diamond nips toddler <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but the tote bag could come in Carry use. Your nipple tape. You need to it might throw out the through. back a little bit if it's on one shoulder. It, it would be a fucking pain in the no, ass. I'm going to make you. Yeah. I was trolling. It's, I'm going to make you do that. You, you get. You would get fucking over that. It'd be so bad. Yeah. You'd have like rashes. Like it'd cut into. Your oh, cunt! No, it'd start to really fuck you up. Yeah. Not happening. Uh, anyway. So for those marathon. wondering about, if you're in the Good Day Goers and you're wondering about when the run club is, we will be getting back to you. Yeah. Or if you are already in a marathon, you're already signed to the marathon, the marathon team, leave your fucking loser team and come over because we have an after party at the Ivy and there's a bar tab for goers. So if you want to be a part of that and you will like, you won't just be able to walk in and join the party. Like you need. If you want to come sing piss. Celebrate and celebrate and yip and yahoo, then you're gonna have to be part of the good switch teams. If you're in a team with all your mates, you're like, Oh, fuck, we're in the like, you know, the run boys club. It's like, Hey, go and find the loser who named your club and who like got you to go and go, Hey, listen, dude, run boys is really good. But if we went over to the good day goers run club, then we would be able to then go and enjoy a sesh on the house at the Ivy afterwards. And if he's going to be like the guy who's, you know, no, nah, I'm not fucking leaving, mutiny time. Mm. Drown him in a shallow you know, pool or something. Yeah, in a shallow pool. <laughs> Punters and dribblers, we are brought to you by Four Pines Beer for the first time ever. A new sponsor comes on board. Not the first time bringing a new sponsor on board, Eddie, but certainly the first time Four Pines has joined the stable. They've also, you know, they've welcomed us into their stable. Yeah, we're just starting to do a bit of work with them. So little bit of it, just dip the toes in. Well, you dip your toes in, but you, when you look into their stable and you see like the Manly Seagulls horse trotting around, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's a stable I want to fucking get into. Oh, you it. got some ponies in here. Yeah, okay. You got some ponies in here. I like that. Mm. Ponies that need to be ridden. Oh, I'll ride a pony. Now, they got great beer. The one that fucks the house down in our very esteemed opinion is the Japanese lager. Um, you may have noticed we've been housing a couple of these responsibly on some streams of late, but it's good gear. Great beer. Shout out to Four Pines. Love your work. Love, Love your sport. Them. Bit of sport, Eddie. I know we were yep. talking sport, but, you know, a bit of fucking, uh, you know, rugby league, I guess, after, you know, deep throat and the great and powerful Ned Brockman. Which well, I, and, and, to- and, well, and Cody Totes, Totes as well. Um, bit of origin, bit of rugby league. Now, I... Wanted to start the podcast with this, but obviously this is the time that we're getting to it. I don't think that you should almost be eligible for selection in the New South Wales State of Origin side unless you are prepared to abandon the birth of your firstborn for origin duties. And Mitch Barnett's done that. And whilst I was a little bit perturbed about Homole Olakawatu's omission... 
Mitch Barnett didn't even miss it for the game. He missed it for a training session. Well, you you probably have noticed that I've I've bitten my tongue around the office in regards to Hamale's uh, omission, mm. and that has been fueled in a large part by the fact that I've seen complete and unadulterated mm. buy-in from Mitch Barnett. Yep, the buy-in of a level that. I didn't expect, quite honestly. Neither. Did not expect it. But now that I've seen it, is the benchmark for the state. Yep. Because if you're representing every single New South Welshman, it stands to reason that you can't pick your own child over the people. No. Because your your, your own child is the people. You're right? also representing your child. Exactly. And I can guarantee you... Have another kid. I can guarantee you this... Mitch, and I'm and I'm backing up your decision here, and I'm speaking to the naysayers. Your kid is going to be prouder of the fact that you went up to Suncorp and bashed the fuck out of Queenslanders for eighty minutes mm. and got a famous W than you been at the attendance of the birth that they can't even remember. They can't even remember it. Think you, back to your birth. Are you looking up, going, "Oh, thank God, Mum and Dad are here"? You don't yeah. even know. You know what you do? You know what you really should do? Yeah, I was there. It was great. It was crazy. You came out of the vagina. It was wild. Never forget it. Photoshop, baby. Don't fuck Photoshop. Just tell them you were there. I've seen a couple of births in my time. They weren't exactly the same, but i tell you what the end result was. A kid popped out. Came out. Was there. Was there. Seen one, seen them all. Fuck it. Have another kid if you're worried about that. Just time it better. I, again, all I'm saying is, as a child, you, you want your old man to be... I would, I would want my old man to have played Origin. If you had the opportunity. Yeah. Instead of being at the birth that I won't remember. Same. I don't remember dad being at my birth. He may not have been there. To be honest, he says he was there. My How old, the fuck no, do I, I know? I've, I've taken it on good authority that my old boy was there. There's, I've not seen a photo. I've got into no it. proof. No. Nah. I've got the, no, we haven't done our due diligence on whether no, our parents were there. Yeah, no, but I'm going on blind faith. Should we call our dads and say, have you got any proof that you're even at the birth? He wouldn't have any. Prove it. He'd have none. He's got this proof of will. Because he's holding Will, and Will had two of the yeah, but you don't know biggest, that juiciest testicles you've ever seen. But you don't know that's day one. <laughs> that could be day two, Tom. Dude, they look like... Do you like, know what I'm saying? No, it's a good point. They just were very fresh testicles. But they could have been a day old. It, listen, if the kid's been washed and it's not looking fucked up anymore, you know what they look like no, when they I come don't, out? I, 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 if it's look. not looking like that with the bloody... With the uh, umbilical, umbilical cord still attached, it could be day two. Or the uh, amniotic fluid. Exactly. You need to almost be down there at ground zero as it comes out. Yeah, you need to be almost, So yeah. have real and honest proof. All I'm saying is, Mitch, you made the right decision. You made the right decision. You put the state first, and in doing so, put your children first, yep. because the state, a, a healthy state is a healthy child. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that- It takes that, your community to raise a child, whatever the fuck that well, is. Well, listen, what, you tell me you don't have a community around you, Mitch? Of course you do. We're all here. We're all here to help. You need me to change a diaper, Mitch? I'll change a fucking diaper. Do I'll you need diapers? Do you need some diapers? Can we diapers? get some diapers sent to, to, to Mrs. Barnett? Let's, let's get some diapers. You know what, Eddie? That's the fucking least we could do. The least we could Let's do. Let's get him some fucking get baby care package. Get to look at look. Are we at, still doing talcum powder? Is that taboo? No, to, talcum powder. They've been sued for something. I don't know if that's still the thing. Don't you now sue us, talcum powder? But you got in some trouble and you know it. Shut up. We're gonna get some some diapers there. You tell us what we need. We need diapers. Yep. We need baby wipes by the fuckload. Maybe a baby one or You probably, but I'm Be thinking expensive. No, 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 it's not dear. They can be dear, but I'm thinking they're going to have all those things. They're going to have your staples. They, well, they're going to have your, like, your big ticket items. They're going to have we need, we, need, we need you every day. We need, grant, we need supplies. This is like us flying over and dropping rice onto a fucking, you know, into a, into a humanitarian crisis. Yes. But it's not humanitarian crisis. This is someone whose husband's earning a good amount of money playing rugby league. He's going to earn $30,000 playing for the state. But what we want to do is we want to give you more wipes than you know what to do with because, trust me, you, you go through them. And then you want to have nappies aplenty because the shits that they do, newborns do some of the most heinous shits of all time. Now, I can't smell. It's a blessing and a curse, but it's a blessing in that context. But the meconium, Edward, meconium is the poo from a newborn baby where they're basically shitting out all of the fluids they've just been ingesting. So the, fir the first. The, like, so the first couple of poos. Now, this kid's obviously already been born, so the meconium Can may I have ask already you passed. Something? Can I ask you something? Do they shit in the womb or do they only shit when they come out? No, now, great question. Great question. 
I believe they usually, and I'm sort of, I should know this given the state of my first child's birth, they usually do their first poo outside of the womb. Evie Rose, first of her name, she had a 40-hour labour. So her first poo came, I believe, while she was trying to get out of there, and then she ingested some of it, which is called... Eating your own shit. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Correct. And I, I think that is the medical term. Forgive me uh, for not remembering. She ate her own deuce, right? <laughs> she, she had a lung full of poop and um, needed to get that sort of sucked out with a tube, right? Mm. So mm. I think they do poo outside the womb first generally yep. if they poo inside that's when we've got bad news bears because no one wants a lung full of poo well i was just i was just curious tom because obviously uh whilst the baby in the womb during the gestation period they're not breathing no, right? they're not and i was just wondering whether or not shits were released and there's some sort of like filter system you know okay, much right. like a filter attached to a pool is there a some sort of plumbing in there is that there can a, remove is there, the is poo there an internal replace? mechanism that's no. washing that fucking f that no. sack out to my knowledge, <laughs> which I should maybe better, they're, 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 they are ingesting the amniotic fluid because that's getting like all their digestive tract and shit going, but they're not passing deuces. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. That was, a, that was certainly the vibe, but, uh, you know, you mm. can never be too sure. No, you sure. can't. I'm not joking, though, when I say, as a token of thanks from the state, I fully intend to find the address of one Mitchell Barnett and shower you know, you know upon who, you him. Know, you know who we can get an address from? And I I would never insist on learning the whereabouts or the or the home address of the Barnetts, but we could send something to Jacko at the Warriors and go, could you could this find could you it, help could us this out? find its way to, to Mrs. Barnett? Could you potentially organize a care package of some some no, no, we'll organise. No, as in we organise it, it, and it's you organise the delivery. It's dropped to New Zealand Warriors headquarters, and they take it and the they home. take it to the home. That's exactly how we do it, because obviously they'll know where they live. I'm just going to ask him right now, and if he comes back just before the end of the podcast, and maybe we can try and maybe we can try and tee this up whilst we're here. Do you know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about a care package of real substance. Oh fuck yeah! Like a real thank you. On behalf of the punter and the dribbler and the state of New South Wales, the greatest state of all, of which, well documented. Honestly, punters and dribblers, Mitch Barnett has set the tone. He set the tone. While Bush Pillar, while the bush poet Billy fucking Slater's out there cancelling on his own people, not picking David for feeder, fucking shipping in Capewell, whose stats <clears throat> this season precede him. We're out here picking blokes like Mitch Barnett who are saying Nabra to the birth of his first child or maybe his second or maybe his third. I'm going to go with first for the point of the story. nabra the birth of his first child to represent the state of New South Wales. I believe the second New South Wales inclusion out of the Warriors since Ryan Hoffman, potentially. Ryan Hoffman was the only other warrior to make don it the blue. to Don the Blue. Yep. I mean, fuck me dead, Mitch Barnett. That's a that's a huge lift from him. And Immense. Immense. you're going to be drowning in nappies and wipes. You're going to be drowning in bum creams. And to be honest, I feel... Serums? Are serums the go? Massage oils. There you go. Because I'm also going to try and impart some parental knowledge on Mitch. Now, he may already have kids, Toddler, if you can try Yeah, he's already got it. a son. How many has he got? One. So this is his second son. Okay. The second. Now, listen. Same one you've sent him all. Do you have? Not true, even though. Uh, I don't know where, how Mitch parents his kids, right, or how he looks after his, his, his two young children now. However that is, it's each to their own. But a tip for young players, and it's a great way to bond with your newborn child, punters and dribblers, is a nightly massage after bath time. And massage oil's the best way to do that. So I wouldn't mind maybe chucking in a couple of oils for Mitch. But most importantly, it's your wipes, it's your creams, it's your nappies. That's the staple shit, and I think that's all we really need to do, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Oh, we're doing it. And if Jacko comes back to us, we can get him on and see how easy it is to organise.
Yeah, hello. Jacko. Talk to me, mate. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm good. What's going on? How are you, bro? Hey, boys. What's doing? Welcome to the show. Kia ora, my bro. Oh, kia ora, boys. It's, it's nice to actually have a, a couple of Kiwi lads call me up at this, this hour. Usually yeah. it's just... Uh, you know, Aussie journos chasing Sean and whatnot. So this is nice. No, no, no. We don't want. We don't want Sean. We want. We want the main man of the Warriors. We want to. Hundred percent. How are you, boy? Mate, we're good. We're good. We're uh, look. We're just sort of. You know, we're getting into our work today on the potty. We've been. We've been digesting the news of the week. Obviously, Jerome mm. Luai's near death experience. Glad he's alive. Glad he's made. It. <laughs> but more important than any of that is that one of your own. Mitch Barnett has foregone the birth of his second child. Not just for a game yeah. of rugby league, but for training. He just wanted to fucking warm up. You know, he wanted to stretch. He wanted to. He wanted to get limber. He wanted to make sure his body, his mind, his soul was right. Tom for the greatest mm. contest of all, which is winning an Origin series in Suncorp. Yep, against the old foe. But so we were, we, look, we were trying to work out what we could do to repay Mitch for, uh, you know, the sacrifices he's made and. We obviously don't think that it's right to ask for his personal home address, but if, of course... We don't want Mrs. Barnett's address. No, but given the fact that, you know, you, we, are, we are close personal friends, first name basis with you, yeah, Mr. Right. Jacko, Vintage Jackson, uh, <laughs> whether, whether we were able to potentially send a fuckload of nappies and baby wipes, maybe, dare I say it, some, some bum cream to... Mm the Warriors HQ that we would then be able to give directly to Mitch Barnett as a token of gratitude on behalf of the great state of New South Wales. Because it's the least we could do. Yeah. Yeah, look, boys, there's there's many, like, you know, you guys know I'm busy. Like I, I'm going to have to be honest with you from the jump. I, I wear many hats at the club. Mm -hmm. um, but ferrying bum cream from the New Zealand postman to Mitch Barnett's locker, I can definitely do. So I can service that part for you boys. A couple of caveats with Mitch. It's, it's not just that he, he missed the birth of his second son for an origin training. It was it was an origin training where he was 18th man. So he wasn't even in the squad. That was <laughs> that was just uh, that was just for game one. So we win. He did that, he we did win. that just in case. Just in case. And you know, this is a guy who yeah misses the birth of his second son for an 18th man early week training session. I might add. Missable one, a light load, so no contact. Um, no contact. And, and, you know, we're only 24 months removed from Cam Munster asking to miss training so he could kick on for day four. So <laughs> I don't know what that says about the various states of your state. Mm. Um, mm. But look, we've, we've got we've got a nation now that predominantly is, is Queensland fans. You guys, as Kiwis, would, would understand for whatever reason, because mm. we're attracted to winners on this side of the uh, ditch. Okay, don't, uh, that's not... Majority. That's lowbrow, Jacko. However, however, however um, I will say that the, the mana that Mitch Barnett uh, leads our, our club with at the moment is, mm. hasn't gone unnoticed, and there's a real ground, groundswell uh, of New South Wales support over this side of the ditch. So, listen, if you guys want to pay token or, or pay homage to to our great leader, our skip. As oh, Jimmy, you, you talk uh, about you talk about mana much from across the dutch. <laughs> <laughs> <Mana much. laughs> oh, yeah, mana yeah. Mitch. That's what we're trying to do. That's all we're trying to do is we're trying to and, respect the mana. <laughs> and listen, if you don't think that I'm stealing that and claiming it as an idea in the next <laughs> yeah. marketing meeting, which yeah. is tomorrow morning at eight AM, I have to say, um, well, as long as long as there's a little Hello Sport logo that yeah, sits underneath, you just put a little right? chair in there somewhere. That's fine. Oh, what what about this? What about this, Jackie? You can take it. If you put a little chair on the sleeve yeah, of the fucking next it. jersey, next Mine jersey. From across yeah. the Dutch. And listen, all we need is an address, which obviously we won't ask you to divulge on on, on air. Well, we can get mm. it off air, but we are again not knowing what like a fuckload of nappies cost. You know what I mean? I don't know the cogs, but I yeah. I do. I am I'm prepared to drop like a an uh maybe almost like an uncut uh. An uncomfortable amount of nappies well, on your doorstep. Well, well, but it needs, but it needs to be realistic because Jacko has come. He's come to us mm. right yeah. as a friend, yeah. but also mm. as someone who's prepared to make it happen for for Mana Mitch from across the ditch. 
I'm not sure. Right. And, and, not and, sure and, and I don't know if we, if, you, and I don't know yeah, if getting well. seven thousand nappies is just going to be that realistic for him to no, be able to true. handle. As much as you and I think Mitch has earned seven thousand, oh, at least. Also, and Jacko, you're a new father as well. Seven thousand nappies you can get through, but maybe oh, by the time you reach seven thousand, the babies have grown out of the. Uh, what 7, about 000. what about this, boys? What about if we do a bit of. Uh, uh, Mun and Mitch from across the ditch, bingo. What about you send a nappy for every tackle and metre run, something to that effect? Listen. Uh, that he comes off the pine for, for New South Wales and knocks out. Okay, what about this then? Let me come back to you with another one. Mm. I will do every tackle he makes and then every metre he makes and then also we'll send you a fuckload more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's time, meters time. times tackles. Yeah, meters times. Yeah, okay. Meters times tackles. Meters times tackles. Yeah, okay. That's, I mean, listen, he doesn't need many minutes to get a, a fuckload. So, Correct. Um, meters times yeah. tackles. That's a Hello Sport promise. Yeah, there you go. All yeah, right. Yeah. Beautiful. It's done, boys. I'll, um, I'll make sure that that is uh, spray painted blue in his locker, ready to go. Excellent. I don't know what Clearing Customs is like for nappy cream, but... Um, we can figure it well, out. Well, listen, 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 I, 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 don't, I don't know if you know this, Jacko. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're aware, but but our two great nations, dear friends, and I believe we have one of the great free trade agreements. I don't know. I don't know if customs are really a thing. But also, we could probably just get into a new. We could, we could, we could touch base with some some people on the ground in New Zealand, Aotearoa, yeah. and yeah. and potentially just organise it on you know there, so we don't need to ship it across. Like yeah, what? I mean, a, what? A, what a New Zealand? Do New Zealand have huggies? Do you have nappies, you have nappies over there? Or is it or huggies or what? What are you guys using? Yeah, you, we, we are we are big huggies guys over here. But um, I'm shocked it's taken the three of us this long to figure out. I could probably just buy them, boys. Well, <laughs> you could, and we could just reimburse you. Or we, but I yeah. prefer I prefer it's, to rock up on a pallet, and you yeah, go, I'd and like, you, yeah, you I open the that. fucking front door of HQ and go. Fuck, that's a lot of nappies. <laughs> I if you if you if it's if a if a forklift's not required, then we I don't done think we've job. done our job. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> oh right, no, listen, we can, that can absolutely happen, and uh, and yeah, tackles tackles times meters is, is, does equal a fuckload. I'm not <laughs> super good at math, but off the top of my head, that yeah. that works out. So, um, done, boys. We'll make it happen. All and right, perfect. And it, it couldn't go to a more deserving bloke. He's a he's a he's one of ours. He's one of yours. He's a Man of the people, Mana Mitch from across the ditch. Mana Mitch from across the, the ditch. Oh, that's Love good. It. Hey, it's Jacko, good. thank you very much for coming on, brother. And also, before we let you go, congratulations on, on what you're doing over the Warriors. Uh, it's from, from like the social side of things and just everything you're doing over there, like it's, it's very noticeable the change that has happened since you've gone there and it's fucking good, specifically just most yeah. recently. No, no, can we ask you? Yeah, yeah, ask yeah. You. Need to ask you now, like yeah. the mic's in front of your mouth. Tim Naki, when you were announced that you were going to Las Vegas, is that is that a is that a Jacko idea? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that one. I'm yeah, well that. done. Well, okay. Mate, we knew it. Honestly, I'm like, dude, that's Jack. It's got to be Jacko. It's so good, dude. It's genuinely I'm, fucking I'm awesome. A, I'm such a degenerate that I fostered a relationship with Tim just before that, anyway, <laughs> out of my own selfish uh, yeah. disgustingness. So, um, yeah, once once the opportunity. Came up, I yeah. I, in fact, it wasn't as complicated as that. I messaged him about, like, bro, we should do this to be a giggle. And then he sent the video. Fun story. Here's a little uh, behind the content curtain for those for those out there that are interested. So I pitched this idea, which we've all seen the end product. Well, I'm sure most of the rugby league community has. You boys, yes, have. we have. Um, so I, my idea was like, hey, Timmy, do this. It comes up wild and they just carry on. I go and explicitly, I said, don't obviously actually gamble because we're just doing this and we'll overlay it. You know digitally post, whatever. He goes, no dramas. Fuck, it took him like three or four days to get back to me. I was like, okay, look, he did tell me he was going to do this. So I hit him up. Bro, he sent me one of the anxiety attack messages of doing. He goes, sorry, mate, I couldn't win. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I was 30K in the hole trying to get a win. And I just about had a fucking panic attack. I sat down because I'm thinking this invoice is going to come back through this marketing at Warriors. I'm going, what do you mean, mate? And he goes, oh, you know, I needed to win for the reaction. I was like, Tim, they're not going to see the card. I didn't need a fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he, goes, oh. he goes, oh, thank God, it's all good, mate. I doubled down right at the end. He ends up winning 35, so we're good. I was like, oh, oh my God. Fucking hell. From that session, he came out on top, but. Tim Naki. Hey, listen, I love that it's not nothing. It's all authentic. Nothing's yeah, no. no, dude. He's just what a what a Kiwi. You know, it's nice to it's nice to share a bit of blood just, with the great just man. A, just, a dairy, <laughs> just a dairy, just a dairy farmer makes, um, done good. 
it makes that when you watch that piece of content now, there's excitement. Yeah, he's kind of putting it on a little bit, but there's also genuine relief in there because he was in the <laughs> hole. He was- <laughs> Dude, such a, it was such a good idea. And again, you, you're fucking killing it and it's awesome to see. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming on and thank you for dealing with a fuckload of nappies coming your way. Oh, I appreciate it, boys, and I'll make sure that it gets the big man. Don't worry about that. I got you. Cheers, Jacko. Thanks, Have a good Jacko. one, bro. See you, mate. Thank you, boys. Bye. Bye. Mad cunt. What a good fella. Legend. Because in that in that in that video of the Warriors going to Vegas, he's double. He does double down. He goes, dude. It's, that's hilarious. Yeah. Shout out to Tim Nucky, one of the greats. And shout out to Mitch Barnett, who has got some seriously uh, well-deserved nappies coming his way. Dude, the fact that that was for the fucking 18th man. Loves his state. He didn't even play. Mitch loves his state. And that's why we win. We're back. Dude, Jacko is awesome. Just quickly, he sent us this little thing. Uh, it's a, from an article here. His decision is recognition of Barnett's form for the Warriors this season and the sacrifices he's made to earn a Blues jersey, including missing Zane's birth uh, while he stayed in camp with New South Wales for a training session in the lead-up to Origin 1. As we acknowledge, Zane's birth was missed for a training session. Uh, We knew it was coming at the time, so I just had to train and get my job done here first, then go back to New Zealand, Barnett said. So this was in game one when he was 18th man. He missed Zane's birth. I knew a couple of days before that I was going to miss the birth, but I had an obligation to the boys here. I was able to help my wife and son get out of hospital. Well, that's good. He helped him get out of the fucking hospital. We have no obligation for his state. He did. It's as simple as that. Th- some things are bigger than birth. Anyway, shout out to Mitch Barnett. Shout out to Jacko. Nappy's en route. Punters and dribbles were brought to you by Neds. You know that by now, but what you don't necessarily know if you aren't punting with Neds is that they are the best in the business. Neds are happy. They're happy with you. They're happy with me. There's no way of sugarcoating <laughs> that. Neds would be very happy with one Tommy Berms over the weekend. Absolutely fucking... Uh, what would have been a famous bet. The kid fumbled immortality. It's on the public record. He would have had his name up in lights. He would have won the season. He'd be on the board. I'd be on the board. You might have to make a board for me. I would have been that good. Tigers minus 13 and a half. What's he put in? Storm. It's just, it's the bed shit of all bed shits. No one's shit the bed harder. No. No one shit the bed more profoundly. No one has fumbled immortality like Thomas has. Correct. But You'll you be able could to, also argue that it's right on brand. Well, you could also argue that, you know, just Tommy content fucking just with his, with his finger on the pulse. Fucking it up. You're making up. like you, 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 That makes out like it was intentional. <laughs> and it wasn't. There's it nothing intentional been. about it. It might have been if you read some of those tin foilers out there. Anyway. You'll be able to hear more of that on uh, About Even, the, uh, the betting show, number one in its class, uh, which is also brought to you by Neds. But listen, if you want to get along and follow along with our bets, make some bets of your own, enjoy punting in a safe and responsible manner, Neds a place to do it. Uh, and you can join our About Even group where bets are also shared. Love you, Neds. Love ya. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. Now, the other big origin story outside of Billy Slater admitting that he wasn't mentally prepared for game two. Uh, but we're going to give Billy a break. Is that Jerome Luai almost died yesterday. And I just think that that's... that's it's, we need to take pause for reflection. We almost lost a great New South Welsh one yesterday. He almost died. We almost lost the 5-8 of the state who has been in sublime form yeah his game two performance exquisite also got that dog in him also prepared prepared to show a bit of lip to show a bit of nip which i really like out of my footballers in an age where everyone's scared shitless of their own shadow and doesn't want to upset some fucking loser they've never met jerome's out there barking and saying it how it is. And barking I lo- and yapping and yapping and barking. And I love it. And I, what. And, I, and I'm here for it every day of the week. I don't know if there's been a greater turnaround in my, like, not even perception of someone, but just my general vibe towards someone, outside of maybe the King, Nick Kyrgios. King, I hated. King now loves. I love King. I didn't like King at the start, but I love, I love King. 
and you know the sign of a mature individual is an ability to realize that you you, you can change your beliefs. Well, that's you and I. Well, that's you and I. We are as we, we are, are as mature we are, and, and advanced, we're mature. And developed, and wise. We're mature. Now, listen, the the great man Jerome Luai of JL could drown in a bath fame, or you know, or a you know, or a Western Sydney wave pool. Yeah, or a puddle of note. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Listen, that guy's turned me around. Now, obviously, he's had some moments. We've all had moments. We all have moments, and we'll have more moments. Yes. Did I, did I love his his comments about work and the punter and the dribbler the day after Origin? No, I didn't. And I don't think he did, but he felt it and he said it. Did I love his best man speech? I actually did, but it was a man bending over and inhaling his own farts. He is... Come back from that. He hasn't let it slow him down. He hasn't changed who he is. He's just kept plying away, plying his trade. He was not my 5'8 to start the series this year. He wasn't our 5'8 in game three last year. It was time to go Jerome. Shout out Jared, Gretel Colleen. It was time to go for Jerome. But he's come back Mate, he is, and he's uh, turned it around. Put it this way. Jerome is playing 5'8 in a fucking... If aliens came down here to want it, you know, like Space Jam vibes, you know what I mean? I don't know what... what? As in, in Space Jam, yep. Michael Jordan's brought in to help the Looney Tunes beat the fucking monsters yes, no, I understand and that. defend Michael from eternal slavery. Yes. What I'm saying is if a similar situation happened, we had to put forward our best 5'8 who's currently fit to support the fucking... the, 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 the people of this planet... You put Jerome. Jerome's for, yeah. playing 5'8". Yeah, you know, he is. No, he is. Now, maybe in another in, a, in an alternative universe where, where Cameron Minster, Munster's fit, maybe sure. he plays. No, but but the, right, the, now, right now... He's defending, the, he's defending the planet. Listen, if fucking Monstars come down on the 10th of July, 2024, and go, we're enslaving all of you to work and exist in zoos... Unless you can beat us in a game of rugby league. Unless you can beat us in a game of rugby league, put your best man forward. Jerome's playing six, and we all know it. That's what we're talking about. Mm. That's the point I'm trying to make. No, it's a great point. I didn't quite get it initially, but I'm glad I gave you the opportunity to, to, to show you working. I completely agree. Jerome Luai, or first picked almost in the 5A position uh, to defend the, the planet as we know it in a game of rugby league against an alien invasion. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's a great point. But imagine, could, can I, let's walk something out. Let's, if, if you don't mind. I'm here. Imagine the fear that would grip the planet mm. knowing that the monsters and the alien invasion threatens our very existence and promises to put us into eternal slavery if we don't get the dub. And you see the 5'8 put forward to represent the planet Drowning in, Drowning a- <laughs> in a Western Sydney wave pool. There would be panic. Oh, yeah. On the most biblical level. Well, it'd be every news network on the planet discussing the fact that Jerome <laughs> Luai almost dies, drowns in a Western Sydney wave pool. I mean, this is humanity's sex, Clint. Why was he doing out there? What's he doing out there? What's he doing out there? Why is he surfing the biggest game of the the life of the planet? What's going on? I mean, Clint, I just think we need better player managers here. What's going on with the lad? He can't even swim. It's a little bit like that because no, kind of instead of there being an early invasion, there is Queenslanders who won't shut the fuck up and won't suck, stop sucking their own penises. We're going to put a stop to that. Yeah. The only way to put a stop to that is get big dubs. And the only way to get big dubs is get up to Suncorp, July uh, 17 and get big wins. Mm. And Jerome's our six. So Listen, it's sort of similar. There's also a chance that Queenslanders drown on their own cocks though, right? And that's something that that's like their own issue, right? They're so busy sucking their own dicks, they may choke to death. That's a possibility. But not it's, our problem, though. But it's not our problem. And you can only you can only you can only prepare for what you can control. Yep. And we don't need to put Jerome, who clearly n- never learned to swim, into a Western Sydney wave pool. It's funny though, Tom, for someone who has such a loud voice and is so comfortable speaking their mind, the fact he hasn't put his hand up and said, Madge, I can't swim. Yeah. Is not alarming, but it's not not concerning. He said he can swim and he can float. Well, he can't swim though, Tobler, because he almost. So why died. do he almost get rescued? Why do you have to get rescued? I don't know. Swell must have been. He pumping can out swim there, and dude. he can float. Well, he's doing better than me. That's what he said. Well, you can. You can. 
You can't float. You can kind of swim. To be honest, you're actually Mate, a good I'm a, person. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, can, I can hold my own. Barely. Yeah, barely. But I don't, I've never been rescued, put it that way. No, the rescuing part is pretty tough. Like, because honestly, roll over onto your back and just get washed into shore. You know? Like, just, just, you don't need to sink. It might be a case... Especially in a way where all and the water's I don't, pushing I don't want to. I don't want to speak for Jerome. I'm just going to, as as a as a country boy, punters and jibblers, as a man that uh, during my formative years didn't have a heap of exposure to the wave, to the swell. Didn't have much access to bodies of water. Bodies of water, incorrect. It's more about the wave and okay. swell. So waves are a different kettle of fish. Bondong Dam, no waves. So you can swim in a dam. What I'm saying is I've had exposure to bodies of water, but not necessarily moving heaps of exposure of to, to waves. To moving bodies of water. Well, I would say, well, rivers move, Tom. So Damn, waves. you said Barandong Dam. Yeah, but rivers, Macquarie River, shout out to it. That's a river. It well, moves. you just you didn't say river. You said dam. I'm talking about waves. Waves okay. are a different entity. They're yeah. a different thing. I'd say rivers may be a bit more punchy than a wave. Bullshit. It depends how big the wave is, but a river's just like pushing you. Wave, you just got to duck under it, and then you're good. Mate, but that's a skill set that you need to learn. And I'm Fair. saying that there's a chance that Jerome Luai, who grew up in Mount Druid, I believe, that part of the world, yeah, maybe he wasn't getting on the fucking train nipping into Bondi every Dearth week. Dearth of waves And out maybe there. waves to him, a big deal. Well, that's exactly what he said. He's like, there's no beaches at Penrith. We don't get much practice out there. But I thought I might try my luck anyway. You know and it didn't what I'm saying? Well, I, 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 you. I can resonate with this man. Yeah. I can I can fucking feel his pain and his fear. Because I get it. Sometimes I go to the beach and I'm like, ooh, bit on out there. Bit too much for this kid. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's like funny, it's isn't just it? if you've not been exposed to it. No, I get it. I can heat, imagine. It can be a little bit like daunting. Daunting. I love it. It's a lot of fun. And I can't, I like, I just, it's fun getting out there and mixing it up. I'm not some like fucking, I'm not Moana here. I'm not a wave rider. Like Luke Bracey, friend of the show. I remember once when he, we were like, he was filming Elvis and he came down and stayed with us in Byron. And he would just go out in the afternoon with a little boogie board and he'd be out in the fucking waves for, I'm not even joking, like three hours. Loving it. And just, just, just observing a him out there. boogie board. He'd take a little booty yeah, boy yeah. just to fuck around. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a yeah. bit of fun. And he'd throw it in, he's swimming, he's fucking body serving, all that shit. And he comes in just foaming at the mouth. Well, he's a blonde head. And I'm him. like, you're a waterman. Yeah, you are. He's a beach as you're, well. you're, a, you're a waterman. That was a waterman in action. Yeah. I laid on the on the comfort of my fucking kab um, of my lounge and I observed him. I was reading a book, but observing and reading and observing. Mm. And observing and reading, reading, mm. observing. Yeah. And I saw a waterman at work, yeah. and it was just another reminder that I don't have any waterman in me. Yeah. But you, should, but it's not. It's and not Jerome wouldn't have any waterman in him. No. And I just think that that needs to be. You, got, you no longer share the same excuse that Jerome does, though. You did at certain points in your life, in your life story. I, now you need to. You you spend. Enough, you live on the coast. I don't, so you don't have an excuse. No, no. But I don't. But nor am I using one. Nor am I using one. Uh, I don't. I've, I I I I go to the fucking ocean all the time now. I've learned to live with it, and I'm I'm getting okay at it. You what still I'm a bit scared. Is when you know, if, it's a, if it's a bit wavy, you're like. Whoa. What I'm saying is, when I first arrived permanently on these shores, well, it was an adjustment. Yeah. By shores, I mean shores of the yeah, ocean. Yeah, right. But like you were out in Clavelli. It was choppy. <laughs> <laughs> It was choppy that day. And you um, know it was. I had to keep How looking it? back into Was it choppy? Not that was bad. It, was bruh. it choppy? It wasn't waves. It was choppy. It wasn't waves. It was there were no waves. Clavelli has like a rock wall that stops waves from coming in. It was choppy. It was oh, choppy. Oh, is that when you were swimming from the pool to the rock? So you swim from the like, side of, you swim from the side of Clavelli to the boy in the middle and then you're back. There was it, chop. I honestly Knowing how bad he was at swimming and his lack of buoyancy, which is a family trait passed down. Through I, the man. I had to. I don't want to. My sister, and my mother, they don't. They don't have the same affliction. I had to keep looking back to check he wasn't drowning. Like I'm swimming and I'm just looking back, making sure he's the fucking there. But like it was not. It must have been pumping, dude. 
Must have been pumped. I was backstroking to check on him. So just if you want to give an idea of how choppy it was, I'm like, you're right, bro. Okay, sweet. It was choppy. Bro. It was choppy. A couple of white caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, oh, it was no, capping. It was, tough, it was capping. Yeah, it was real tough. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Um, I'm just glad, though, that Jerome has survived. And I think, I wonder whether he now has a new, like, outlook on life generally. And that maybe enables him to play some free have rugby you ever league. Had, have you ever had a near-death near experience? experience? I've been on a plane that dropped a little bit once and you dad looked scared. You've also been in the car with Street. Oh, well, fuck. So, yeah, dude, dude, one time with Street. Yeah, I know the who story. used to... That's why I brought it I up. was reminded of this the other day, just what that fucker put me through driving from Sydney to Bathurst the amount of times. He used to rest his McDonald's Coke on the dashboard. Not in the drink holder, on the dashboard. And I'd be like, Hamish, what are you doing? And he just... The amount of times he would spill an entire thing of Coke all over his dashboard and all over anything that we had from there down that's all the wrong side of the I, I am because the coke was involved in this oh was it I didn't know that he had a coke on the dashboard two lane highway going either direction night time and two lane not a dual carriage not a dual way. one going one way one going the other way you're farmland. straight up and down ridgy ditch highway farmland as far as the eye could see either way it was just it was dark Street pulls into we've got a, we've got like an L plater in front of us. Street he pulls into what is the other side of the road, what he seems to think is the fucking overtaking lane, even though there's no other road, and he's just but just isn't like I'll speed past this guy and pull in, he's just coasting, and I'm like, Street's car up there, nothing. Street's car coming. Street's car. Coming. Street, there's a fucking car coming. He's going shit. <laughs> Reams it all the way back over to the other side of the road because we, we were basically neck and neck with this other car where we weren't overtaking properly. He then, I can't remember if he overtook it in front or behind, but then just slams it back over. His fucking stupid coat goes everywhere. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, get it together. What the fuck? Like, if you're going to have a a fucking high-speed crash on a highway, obviously that's awful no matter which way that happens. But if the way it happens is you not realising you're <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road, from ju like just not that's really... Pre it's preventable. It's so preventable. It's like, <laughs> it's really upsetting if that's the way I go out. Like, if we fell asleep at the wheel, awful. But, you know, there's something that happens there. If you were driving under the influence, stupid but still awful, fucked up, if you fucking hit a kangaroo, but if you just think <laughs> that this two-lane highway isn't a two-lane highway and you can just drive head-on into another car, like, I just would have felt a little cheated. So, yeah, I've had a near-death experience, and I think that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, that gives you a little more clarity, and I think that it probably helped Jerome having had one well, of his Well, did own. it help you become a better man? I think so. I think from that moment... Did you uh, go out and dominate? Listen, I probably went back and had a couple of couple of willies back in the house. <laughs> a couple of willies, a couple of bugs. It certainly helped me rip a couple when we got back to Bathurst. A couple of willies, yes, sir. Not anymore, but fuck. But I don't, no, no more. My life can't I'd take fucking anymore. kill me. But don't you think Jerome? I'll be the first man to die from weed about a willie. Yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. <laughs> Uh, At least you're a man, but fuck back then. Big fat bugs. Oh, a couple of bugs after a long hard day of not doing anything was or surviving. Well, exactly Living. right. Yeah, cleaning fucking McDonald's Coke off your lap. <laughs> um, what the, the point here is, punters What's and the dribblers, point? do you think that a near-death experience for Jerome Luai has him primed for a man of the match performance? Or at least a game where he is free to play the rugby league he is born to play? Because now he knows, well, life's short. I almost died on Wednesday. If, if, Tuesday. If you've if you've if you've if you've ex, if you've seen death, if you've seen the pearly gates, looked it in the if face, if you've seen the white lights, punters and dribblers, that's a trans that's a transformative experience. And off the back of that, Jerome now with a new lease on life is free to play f unbridled rugby league football. Yep. Because before that, he was brighter with the expectation of living up to certain standards and delivering certain results and, and sort of making the most of, of this life, not realising how fleeting life itself is. Yep. When you've been let off the hook by the big fella upstairs, G-O-D. G-O-D, double D. Capital G-O-D. You know what I'm talking about, the big fella upstairs. Amen, sister. Then... 
you, you're just a different footballer after that. Well, you play football differently. Am I gonna? Fucking- I think. I think. I think. Tom, there's an argument to be made that you play football for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. Jerome Lowe's going out for his first game of rugby league on Wednesday night, <laughs> and fuck knows how he's going. I think there's a. He's in for a huge game. His first. His first game. His of first rugby game of rugby league, league Wednesday yeah. night. Jerome Luai. He Jay might win Beyond. Origin on debut. <laughs> he might win his first game of rugby league. Happened to be a decider at Suncorp. He's also played the other two games, but like no, but he, well, but, but, no, but, but he, he hasn't. But, but he hasn't. Well, he's though. also already played like a couple of hundred. Uh, but, but, he had, but, but the, the point is, that's what I'm trying to say. You're laughing at me at home. You're laughing at me. I know you. But you don't. You, you, you don't. You understand. clearly don't understand what I'm saying. Tom's picking up on it. He's oh, getting I'm it. Getting it. He, he, you haven't played the game of rugby league unless you've almost died in eight foot of water out in Western Sydney. Yeah, where you could almost touch the bottom. But not quite, and that's not the quite. point. Yeah, yeah. But where you could possibly have just rolled and not over it. and not quite, and that's the point. You also had a board you could have just washed into shore on. Well, he's obviously come off it, Tom. Well, so what? There's no ankle. They don't probably have a well. fucking so what is it called? A strap, a leg rope, maybe not. Semantics. It's not though, is it? Because that's how surfing works. You Semantics. have you're strapped to a board. Semantics. You pull towards Semantics. You and float on it. His first I game of rugby league. You know, first, oh, look, I'm excited for his first game of rugby league. Jerome Lewis debuting Wednesday night, Suncourt <laughs> Stadium, State of Origin game three. Punters and dribblers, we are brought to you as always by Good Day Daily Multivitamins. Uh, if you feel like making a change, taking control of your nutritional health, you need more energy, mental clarity, work on that immunity. For a change, a bit of liver health. Well, Good Day is the daily multivitamin for you, especially if you find it fucking confusing like I did. Uh, BeGoodHealth.com.au. Now, Eddie, as always, we're going to hear a review. Just wanted to shout out some dude whose name escapes me who thinks these are all fake. Uh, yeah, he does. Listen, just go to BeGoodHealth.com.au. I'm just reading them off the yeah. fucking review we're sheet. Just reading them. They come through every day. And he's like, I hey, just go to the website, and there's another one there. That's all that happens. That's all. It's literally yeah. what happens. I go to the website and I read reviews on the website. But also, so, how the fuck? I mean, and I'm sure there is a way. But like, what you go and get people to write fake reviews, or do you go and write a hundred million fake reviews in the fucking tone of the punter and the you dribbler? You can't. You can't. You can't get someone to write these. You can tell they're not fake the, by the way they're written them. You're an idiot. No, you're now, an absolute. It's obviously spoon. it's obviously flu season, punters and dribblers. So just just a reminder that Good Day will help boost that immunity. As a first. First year school teacher, the amount of germs and bugs I'm exposed to every day would make the regular man That would collapse. actually be fucked. I've never even thought about that. However, since taking this golden nectar daily, I seem immune to even the most virus-ridden child. Would highly recommend to anyone who's trying to avoid the winter flu or just give themselves a daily boost. I mean, these kids are around fucking one-year-olds or year one kids. Kindies, dude. Like, they're all they're all sick little Petri dishes as well. It's fucking... And look at him just kicking goals out there. Fucking... You punch straight through nuts. it, dude. You punch straight through it. Don't let flu season ruin your life. Get good at India. Yep. BeGoodHealth.com.au. Um, can we, we, we get playing? that? Are we playing? Anyone want to get playing? Anyone flew over, it? man? Anyone want to sponsor that plane? Oi, sorry, dude. Sorry, I'm thinking of marketing opportunities. <laughs> sorry, I'm thinking of marketing opportunities. Didn't know the mics weren't picking it up. Uh, can we get the goal from that 16-year-old freak? Yeah, I'm trying to get it up now. It's on Twitter. Um, I don't want this to sound crass. Yep. But I'm going to say it anyway. That kid is going to get so much pussy <laughs> slash penis, <laughs> depending, depending on what, on he, what he likes. Yeah. It's sickening. He's still got braces on. He's got braces on in that f- in when he's scoring. That's the f- what it's I mean. Fucking dude. unbelievable. I can't remember his name. Is Joel Yamal. Romero? Yamal. Yamal. If, Yamal. Lamine Yamal. Yamal. If you're not across, if you're not across the Euros, Spain bested France two one overnight. Well, the early. Is this, this not morning. the Copa America? <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you pick up on that dead nah, shit? Nah, nah, nah. Uh, Cody Totes, resident football analyst, was telling me that he was he's been a freak for a long time. Everyone's eyeballing this kid since he was coming up through the bath. There's a photo ranks. of like fucking Messi giving the kid a bath. I know that's a baby. Weird. Yeah, but there's a photo of Messi yeah. giving him a bath. He did a, a photo baby. shoot when he was like four months old. It's not weird. Messi's a deity. I don't mean weird in any weird sense. I just mean like that's insane. Well, he's been bathed by Jesus Christ. So, you, so it makes sense that. You know Can you I mean? find the bath photo as well? Yeah, but I got him here. If Messi's not related to God, I'm not here. Yeah. Now, this kid, this kid, punishment. Think about this. Think about this. 
is 16 years old, 16 years of age. Teeth, and his, teeth and his, aren't even straight. And he scored an equaliser in the semi-final against France. And, and I don't know where I saw this, but someone like a – I don't know if it was a Spanish sort of commentator or some shit – said before the game, uh, like, something crazy would have to happen for him to be able to, to get a start in the final or some shit. And then, so, and then he said something afterwards, like, speak now. Is that any bullshit? Inf any information? On oh, that I team? don't have any info on that. Have no, I sorry. missed that? I'll look it up. He's, like, the youngest ever player to play in the Euros as well and the youngest player to score. And he he's started every game, though, this tournament. Yeah. Sure. Okay, then I don't know whether... No, so, so he's, the, he's the tournament's youngest ever goal scorer. He's the youngest player to ever play in the Euros as well. He actually turns right? 18 uh, turns on 17, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. The 17, day before the 17, final. 17, say, there's, there's no way he can go from 16 to 18, <laughs> uh, as far as I'm aware. But not only that, your team's 1-0 down. Against France. Against France, the World Cup finalists. And then before that, the World Cup winners. Were they before that? Were they going for back-to-backs? -back? Back -back? Yes. Get out of town. So... Have you skipped through the ad here? Or are we going to watch yep. an ad when you press play? No. Nah. Let's get some vol. Well, oh, can oh, we get, go to no, Twitter, Tobler? No, no, it, no. It's been wiped from Twitter. No. Oh, you're up to sport. Watch the, you're up to sport. How do you, can I ask you something, Tobler? How do you have a job here? Tobler. That's a good question. No, no. I want to ask you something. I don't even think to go to Opta Sports. No, to Tobler. Tobler. Yes. Op, just go to if, Tobler. Opta Sport. Tobler. I watched it today. Tobler, stop. Stop, stop for one second. If you just go Euros into Google, I don't know how you don't know this, the fucking, the whole highlight of the three-minute, the three-minute fucking thing comes up. Do you not watch these? Yeah, I do. Do you know how the internet works, cunt? You think there's no video of this fucking goal on the internet? No, I know You're going to go to Fox Sports News oh, and have... Pablo Fagiano, remember him? Just watch, watch Pablo the match. Fagiano. Watch them, watch, get the match recap up and find the moment. Tell me you remember Pablo Fabi Fagiano. No. I'm pretty sure, and forgive me, punters and dribblers, that's just, that name's just come back to my brain. I don't know how it was even in there, but I swear there was a football commentator on Fox News, Pablo Fagiano, Fox Sports News. Fuck, can't you fucking? You've, you, I don't remember that. Just you, you're gonna need to Google Pablo Fabi Fagiano before we hear. Who play used to do scene. Fox Sports News? I Who mean, used to do a that? few of those, but. I don't know, but Pablo Fagiano. Fox Fagi Sports News. If Pablo Fagiano wasn't a Fox Sports News presenter, I'll eat my own asshole if I can reach. It says win television here. Okay, so he's never on Fox, but was he at least a sports reporter? Because Okay, that'll, that'll do for me. Yeah, Pablo Fagiano was a reporter for Fox Sports News. Oh, oh back in like oh, 2009. Fuck yes, dude. That's huge from that the kid. That name, dude. That's has, huge from the kid. That name's existed in my brain without having been thought of for days. Fucking nine years, and then it just—you know what? You know what that? You know, you know what I've just got in my brain now off the back of that, and it's just—it's just such a beautiful nostalgic memory for me. Regional TV sports recaps: Dubbo Sims beat uh, the Macquarie Raiders overnight, fourteen points to twelve in a fiery uh, fiery uh, contest, and it's just the way it's shot and reported. It's. So so good. Oh, dude, it's fantastic. It's shot from like a just on a, a tripod from a hill. It's unbelievable. Also, another great voice. Um, if you're if you're on the radio and you're flicking between uh, channels on a of a morning, and what do you hear? No, he's going to win this year. Going to beat him, bash him. That's, that's our how custom. Beat him, oh. bust him. I bash him, bust him, and custom rhyme. Beat him, bust him. That's our custom. Go. Well, in in in, uh, in Dubbo, so you'd say beat him, bash him. That's our custom. Yeah, that's ridiculous. No, you didn't. You just you missed. Swear to God, swear to God, we did. You can't. Someone must have gone bust him. It sound better. Beat him, yeah. bash him. That's how, the whole thing rhymes except for that. Beat, beat him, bash him. That's, how, that's it. No, there's no way. Hundred percent. No, 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 no. There's not. Oh, listen, I refuse to believe. Hey, that. hey. Can I ask you something? I refuse. Can to I ask you something? Just quickly, just quietly. Were you Oxley sports captain? I left in year nine. W no, you're eight. Uh, so I was probably in line for no, it. No, no. But but Dubbo South Primary School. I was House Oxley captain. Sports captain. It would be primary sure here. Yeah. yeah. But were you captain? For oh. Dubbo South Primary? No. No, I wasn't. So like... Yeah, but I'm just no, saying... No, but, but, but I, just well, find, that, I, I just find it... I just find it interesting. That reflects poorly on you. That reflects poorly on you as a captain then. If you 
were not able to see a clear error. Not only an error, but one that every other school fucking sings that song and you guys said, beat them, bash them, that's our custom. Everyone would have been like, those guys are fucking stupid. You ever heard of a rhyme before? Oi, read a poem, dickhead. Now I forgive you because you're not a big poem guy, but I'm just saying you should have been better than that. As the captain of your fucking sports, yeah. and, and, you should have been better. Listen, it's not about rhyming; it's about winning. No, it's it's about both. It's about it's not about rhyming; it's about winning. It's about and, and, both. And it's dude. about beating them. It's about bashing them because no, that's our them. custom. <laughs> no, dude, right? there's no. If you went to Double South Primary when Eddie was captain of Oxley House, please reach out in circa 2008. Because I don't believe that he remembers it correctly, or at least he was a poor captain. Maybe. There's every chance. Every. Well, I don't know where we're at here. Pablo we're, we're, Fagiano, we're Fox Sports News. You ready? You ready, Tom? Did you find yep. it? Yep. Where'd you find it? I found it on YouTube. Wow. wow. D- I'm sorry. Here we I'm are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. You're out. Look at this. Oh, oh bro. Oh. It is simply amazing. Look at this replay, bro. Look at this. Oh, no, no, do the slow mo. Slow mo on the boot. Yeah, yeah. it is. Bulls. Bang. Oh, that's pure. That is Look just pure. Look at that, dude. That thing is perfect. Like, I'm not a big soccer guy. You're not a big soccer guy. You're bigger than me, but like. I, I, I follow it. I, and not, I don't but, watch it. You, oh, follow, I follow, it. you it. follow it much closer than I. I'll follow it less closely than you. But like, at its, at its top, top echelon, at the best it can be, it is a fucking wonderful wonderful sport maybe because i have to you know like as a league is the best we have in this country it's hard for me to fully get into highlights it. football highlights soccer highlights or as good as anything you'll see are just our fucking elite especially goal scoring. can you get roberto carlos's outside of the boot goal do you remember that do i remember we used that? to d- that was like some of the first shit we used to download Tom, illegally do not on insult my intelligence well i probably watched it before you did not a big deal well you're older than me exactly so i'm fucking you're showing fucking you four years older than me have mate. you seen the roberto carlos goal yeah, of course did it upset you, Tobler, when Eddie referred to Cody as our football aficionado? No, nah, not really. He's probably more of aficionado than me, although I am passionate. <laughs> so, no, I'm not cut. I'm not fucking cut. Don't bring it up. <laughs> although I am passionate. Although man, I am man passionate. Tobler, I will say this. I'm going to come into map in the bat for my, pause it, pause for my it, boy, it. who's, who's uh, head passionate. of the Tobler Boob Club. Pause it. Tobler oh, likes his football, and he and I have have had good, honest, hearty conversations. Robust. Robust conversations about it this year. And I've enjoyed it. Yeah. I particularly enjoyed taking 100 bucks off him when he said Arsenal would win the fucking the that Premier League. That was tough, dude. That was just like taking money from a baby. Although that'll never happen again because he can't be trusted when it comes to, to, to betting. Not the point. Oh, yes. Cody Totes, though, in my estimation... Just seems to have a bit of a sharper, nuanced approach to the to the game of uh, football mm. in this country known as soccer, which is why I labelled him the football aficionado. Did you even did you feel at all bad to Tobler? Did you even consider the implications emotionally? That'd be a first. I think I think I think me coming on here saying that you and I have had some nice moments this no, year. No, that was that was respectful. I appreciate it. Was that. very respectful. And that, and and the fact that you're not aficionado, I think frees you up for us to have further conversations around the sport. Absolutely. Why? Why does it free him up? It's because you don't even value it. Because I just think that if he was you don't respect his if opinion. he was burdened with aficionado, it just he'd take it too seriously, and yeah. we just we wouldn't be able to have organic. Chats. You wouldn't be able to enjoy the conversation because he would be too intense. He'd be he'd be overawed by it. Mm. Exactly, but I did find the comments you were talking about, Tom. The French midfielder before the game said, uh, talking about Yamal, it'll be up to us to put pressure on him above all. Yamal or your mum? Sorry, was that a dumb joke? <laughs> 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 no, I think it's a reasonable question. <laughs> that is a fair question. Sorry. I don't Yamal, I believe. Oh, Yamal. Sorry. Okay. That could oh, be just, our pronunciation it of it. It just took me back to could a schoolyard where it, someone said, Yeah, mum. Could you imagine if it was your mum? <laughs> your mum! Your mum! Your mum! Dude, that'd be fantastic. And his nickname would be MILF. Yep. 
Probably would be. You would, you'd think so. Uh, what were the comments so he about said, your mum? Um, it will be up to us to put the pressure on him above all, not pressure to let him feel mom. comfortable and to show him that to play in a Euro final, he will have to do much more than what he has done so far. And then Fucking he goes out hell, and scores bro. that belter. Woke the beast there. Talk oh. shit, get hit. Talk shit, get hit, son. Love it. Fucking oath, your mum. Get up and into yeah, it. Yeah, it's your mum now. Can we just see Roberto Carlos's goal? Downloaded from LimeWire, 2004, five. What year were we downloading Roberto Carlos's goal off LimeWire? Yeah. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. Here you go. Um, pause it. Seba, you want to come watch it with us again? For old time's sake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was come come sit on the come sit on the stoop here. You can come watch it for a second. This Just, is this is three four five. Yeah. Look at this. Outside of the boot, I didn't realise a ball could be kicked like this. We well, defied physics, Roberto. This was also this is peak this is peak Brazil too. Yeah. Oh, is this Ali McCoist? Who is the French goalkeeper here? Commentator. Bartez. Oh yes. Bartez. Boosh! Oh! I don't believe it. Look at that. Fuck. That is so sick. Oh! Look at that thing, dude. That's fucked. He's 50 out. Yeah. FIFA was the best one that he's comes to commentating. What a – Ronaldo in there as well, the Ridge. That's, what a Scott, that's, an, that's a great fucking football side, that. That Scottish cunt isn't still on FIFA, is he? That commentary team, that was the fucking, that was the who? best FIFA. What, Martin Tyler and Alan Smith? Martin Tyler and who? Is it Alan Smith? Yeah. I swear it was Ali McCoy or some shit, dude. Does that name yeah, ring yeah, about? Ali McCoy, like, welcome to Martin Tyler and Trafford, yeah. Ali McCoy's here. Martin Tyler, Ali McCoy's rain-soaked. It was like a rainy game, Ali McCoy. Yeah, you'd always right? go rain-soaked yeah. or snow. Dude, God, good that stuff. Was good stuff. Anyway. Maybe when we go down and do our uh, who can kick the furthest challenge, we try and recreate Roberto Carlos's. Well, I don't mind doing goal. that. Well, we've got it. The, the biggest kick has also got to be paired in with the, the foot golf. We've got to do both. TBC. I also saw somewhere that that goal went over 100k an hour. That kick. No way. What? 100 kilometers an hour? While we're, oh, while we're on the topic as well, I don't know how if you quick, go, I'm not saying no. I'm more just... No, like, no. How just, quick do balls go? No, no, that, no mate. Well, th if you can they go that quick? Bro, if you can throw... If you can throw wow. 100... If you can throw 100 k's, you can kick 100 yeah, k's. Yeah, I guess you're right. 100%. The free kick reached a top speed of around 100 k's an hour. Wow. That's crazy. Unsavable. I guess it's... Like, it is and it isn't crazy. It's it's more, I guess, for some reason, conceptually, considering a bowler can bowl a ball of fucking 150 k. The way I think not. about the way I think about it is how far could you throw a, a steed in? I think it's how far could you kick one? Yeah, but I wonder whether you could throw something quicker than you like. Would you? Or do no, you think, think about what the, I'm think about what I'm saying? There's way more power in your legs. Way more. Yes. Do you think there's more control in? So there's hard, more no, power there's like in your legs. I got a question here. Questions. This is a question. Yep. This isn't me saying anything. You can definitely kick something further. And that would imply to me power. Okay, but put it this way then. You could throw a cricket ball further than you could kick a cricket ball. So your leg might True. be more powerful. True. So like what's the what True. are we looking for? True. You could throw a fucking you could kick a soccer ball further. Okay, than you could, what about this? What about this? What about this? So like how do you work that? What about out? this? What about this? I feel like your arm what about can this? move quicker. What about this? Or it's more efficient. What about this? What? We get an elite thrower, a baseball man or a cricket man, a bowler, and at release, how quick is it? That's sort of where you and go. Then, and then at release, how quick is a ball going? And see who, quick, and see who wins. Yeah, who can generate the most I reckon, I reckon, terminal velocity? I reckon, I reckon someone driving their foot into a fucking soccer ball, what speed's that doing five metres after it's left the foot? That thing's flying. You could even think about it from like an MMA perspective, right? Like a kick to the head as opposed to a punch to the head is a different beast. But in terms of like how quick something's going, maybe that's a bit different. Obviously, the power resides in the, the leg, the leg undisputed. But there's also a part about being able to control. But does like that med, does that, does that, is that uh, passed on to speed of an object? Also, potentially, you're, when you're kicking something, you aren't actually in control of it. You just meet it. Whereas with a ball, you are like... 
Yeah, yeah, you know, you could. Tr- well, you made it. As it's a different yeah, as opposed yeah. to holding you're and hold, releasing. You're not like, holding. They're not. They're not exactly they're not mechanically the same. They're the same not the same thing. thing. And, and so a cricket ball is heavier and has like less mass than a soccer well, ball. It, it, and, but also, yeah, no, yeah. but the thing is, you can't kick a ball. Like for example, a a golf ball can go like four hundred meters, right? If if or if I hit it, or let's just say three hundred, but it's more than that. But you couldn't kick a fucking uh, golf ball because it hurts your foot. Even if it, let's say you just were impervious to pain, there's no way. But also, it's about it's also about the optimal thing to hit a ball with. So Could it's you, also like you if, if you hit a pain, golf ball pain, with a golf pain, club, if pain, does, gonna, if pain doesn't come in, can you kick a golf ball further than you can throw it? Uh, I don't think so. I think you no, get more speed with the throw golf it. club than you, you would with no, no, no foot, foot or arm. I think arm. Or I think arm. I think arm, dude. Do you know what I'm trying to say? No, I do. That's I'm not, we, I we maybe I'm uncovered not, a bit I'm of not, a fucking. I'm not sure. Neither I think am you I. can go quicker with your arm, but you get more power. I think generated from your legs. So then it's a speed versus but power. You got to hit it sweet. But also, like, what's more, a more optimal vessel for generating speed with an object? You might be able to use your actual appendage to fucking whip someone into the no, head. No, but the problem, the problem with kicking, a, and this is getting really nitty gritty. The problem with kicking a golf ball, pain not relevant here for the for the point of the argument, is that you've got to catch it sweet. Whereas if you throw it, you're in such control yeah. that, that the sweetness element's not as important. Correct. I reckon so you could kick a soccer ball further than you could throw one, though. Yeah, definitely. But that's also the size of the ball. Yeah. It's like the ball is not if you had if you had an object. But but you can still throw it. You can you can still hold it well enough to throw it. Well, so, okay. So, okay. So, hold on, so, hold on. so to that end, I reckon if you if you if you sweet spotted a uh, a golf ball, I can you can kick it further. Than the you throw. thing that maybe the difference is is that like so like so let's say a soccer ball is there on, a world on, record? Hold on, hold on. A soccer ball is designed to be hit for it to generate distance, whereas there are things that are designed well, to well, be thrown. Well, a, well, a golf ball is designed to be hit, for example. Yeah. Which is what we're using. But you'd hit a golf ball. You'd hit a golf ball with a golf club further than you could. Or hit with the foot. I think. Or you think it's designed for the club. What I'm saying is it's designed for a club. It's not designed for a foot. True. Right? That's a good point. So it's like it's it's purpose built to bounce. Whereas a soccer ball is purpose built for a foot. They're purpose built for the thing that that, that we're. It's optimized for the thing that we're trying to hit it with. It's a great point. Because if you just have direct object, V direct, let's have a coconut, V, you know, a coconut. Tom, it's a great point. I'm hearing you. And, and I don't know the answer either. I think we're all sitting here hat in hand. Well, what, like, I'm, what, we I'm, don't what I'm saying is surely there's a Guinness World Record for the fucking furthest a cricket, uh, a soccer, sorry, a golf ball's been kicked. That's got to be a Guinness World Record. I'm playing foot golf for my birthday with my mates. I'm going to get some reps in before we vest. Where? When's your birthday? Next week. Where are you playing? Haven't figured it out yet. We'll probably go to the one in Western Sydney. He's allowed to do that. I know he it's is. his birthday. I know he is. What are you looking so devo for? I'm not devo. I'm saying this little fucking cunt's going to go out there and get a bit of foot golf. It's it's good. It's, yeah, that's fine. He needs it. Yeah, true. To be honest as well, like, we'll beat the absolute piss out of it. Like, I've actually never been more confident of beating the fuck out of someone <laughs> in foot golf. Like, you, oh, you play soccer on Sundays, cunt. You haven't seen it. You, like, I get it, dude. You he's, play, not winter, he's not winter for He's not winter. And you, you fucking lose every week. You guys suck. <laughs> You guys aren't even good. That's, about, even that's all goals. relevant, though. And he doesn't even score goals. You, are, you don't score goals. Your team's not good. You talk shit about your team all the time. Like, I'm fucking playing with and losers. And I said invite. Keep all this in. I said invite. Keep all this I, in. I, I, Cody says his team sucks all the time. For you guys, if you're Cody's team listening, he hates you. And I said... <laughs> <laughs> I said to Cody, invite me out to watch you, and he never has. He hasn't invited us out there to watch because he knows, dude. He's We're going to see someone trip over. He's the sort of guy that accidentally ties his shoes together. All right, everyone, that's us. We're done for another week. Thank you very much. We love you. We miss you. See you later. We don't miss him. Well, we, a little bit. You anything else you want to say? Uh, I wanted to say bounce that out the trackies. Bounce Out Trackies are on sale Tuesday the 16th of September. No, July. <laughs> Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday the 16th of July. Hello, Sport.shop, 6 p.m. 
Make smart decisions. Um, spend your spend your cat. If you're feeling if you're feeling sick, tired, or foggy during the day, by good day at bigwoodhealth.com. Or you're just worried about your general immunity health, yeah. which isn't something you can actively understand every single day. But if you just want to yeah. try and make smart decisions around that, correct. Um, if you want to support Ned Brockman and what he's doing for homelessness, visit We Mobilize because they're doing a lot of great work for homelessness in this country. Mm-hmm. Also, watch Run on Ko Freebies next Tuesday unmissable stuff shout out to cody totes uh f- because he's going to be running with a tote bag slung around his neck uh for 42.1 he's gonna, at the end of the run he's going to look like a turtle that you found with a net around his neck in the ocean for like hours for like months almost yeah. and it's like it's cut into his it's, neck it's like it's like that it's like a fucking turtle that's got a six-pack fucking hole there. yeah and it's like cut into his neck as he's been swimming in the ocean yeah. for months yeah that's what it look like that's what cody's gonna look like uh and shout out to the pun and the dribbler of which we are very fond yeah we love you all bye-bye ciao could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>